Starting off in early New Orleans jazz, you gave an example of Louis Armstrong playing Sweet Georgia Brown. How, what are the chord voicings there? Are they using mainly triads? Is there six chords being brought in? Yeah, there's a what, little bit of everything, but I'm going to distill it really simple. So, I, so just about anybody can take this down. I use these two shapes of seventh chords, and I'm going to use an A7 chord just to be just to start because it's in the middle of the neck and it's really easy to see, right? So I'm going to put my middle finger on the fourth string on the seventh fret. I'm going to put a finger, my index finger on the third, on the third interval of that, which is the C sharp on the G string. It's the sixth fret. And then I'm going to put my ring finger right here on the second string on the uh, eighth fret. And we get that. We get this nice chord voice and you can replace that with your pinky. Right, and I play that in a ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk way, just with these three fingers. Now, that you can move this anywhere. Right, but you can move this around. And you can move it really easy to another seventh chord shape. It's a different voicing. And the shape of that voicing is, and this, this has to do with the circle of fifths. So you, you hear about the circle of fifths a lot. This is a, the circle of fifths is like a color wheel that uh, uh, chord progressions can be written on. So you got to think about this. This A7, it's an extension of your A chord. You can also get rid of your A major chord on the banjo, get rid of the pinky and bar the first two strings, right? But this is just like we're skipping that second string and we're putting it on. Right, we're putting it right here. So the easy way to think about making a major chord into a seventh chord is by barring the first two with your major, your one major chord shape, right? So, but I do it like this because, because of this. When I go to the D chord to make a D7, which is a fourth away, right? All we have to do is take that note on the third string, right, which is the G string. It's a D. We want to move that down to a C note on the third string. And it looks like this. We keep all the other notes the same. Right? I'm trying to move my finger, so it's a good thing I can see the screen. Right? But now we have a chord change. We can go from this. Right? That's really cool. And now we can go down to the G. You can even, right? But we're not going to go there. We're going to go one back and do the same thing. So we're going to do these two. In, we're going to do this change in this spot. You see the pivot. The middle finger st stays the same, and the the index and the ring finger fall behind one fret. Let's see how that works. Now I'm going to go down a whole step. Keep going if you want. We'll go down a half step or see. But it works really great whole steps apart. You're gonna see that a lot in Dixieland and traditional jazz. So that's the one major voicing that really changed things for me.